First up, we have a revision, the long awaited 3.5 inch TFT Featherwing is being revived, revised, it's de-zombified, going to be back in stock tomorrow, um, but if you're watching this on YouTube, it's probably in stock by then. So you've got a touchscreen, 3.5 inch, 320 by 480 display, beautiful color, uh, and it's got a resistive touchscreen, so if you go to the back of the board, um, this is V2, which you can tell because it's V2. A few updates. The... Um, TSC, sorry, the STMP touchscreen controller got discontinued over COVID and we couldn't get any more. Now it uses the TSC 2007, which is great, works over I squared C, so it's going to be um, even better for most Mac controllers because uh, you don't need a separate chip select line and also you don't have to interrupt the SPI to the display, so you'll probably get better display um, throughput. Uh, there's an IRQ now um, connected to where the chip select used to be. We also added a STEM IQT port and we made the reset button right angle. Um, the backlight driver also got updated. So it's going to be a, a big upgrade. You're going to need to, uh, if you're using the touchscreen, you'll need to update your firmware. We have Arduino and CircuitPython code, but the STMP um, touchscreen controller, like I said, has been totally amazingly discontinued to the point that we could not buy any more. Um, but I'm excited to bring this product back to life. Okay, and then we got cameras. Okay. Also coming soon, we have um, a range of different OV5640 cameras with different lenses. So all of these have the same quality. They all, the chip underneath is the same. The sensor module is the same, but the lenses vary. So this one, so let's go, uh, let's go from the beginning and I'll, I'll, I'll talk about each one. This one is 120 degree, so it's like a wide angle lens. And you see that metal ring around it, that metal case that means it has an autofocus motor in it which means that you can load firmware onto it that you can then tell it i want you to go into an autofocus mode and it will be able to do like close-up photos um better because it can move the lens back and forth not a lot like a teeny bit but it does have some autofocus capability which could be kind of cool to play with um so yeah that's the that version and then the next one this is a 120 degree lens also, so kind of like wide angle lens. And you'll notice it doesn't have that metal casing. That's because it doesn't have autofocus. It does, however, have um, slightly better distortion um, management. So we have like a fisheye 120. This is a non-fisheye. It's still like, it's still somewhat fisheye, but it's like less distortive around the edges. It has more of like a deep um, hallway look than like a fisheye look. Uh, so that's this one. And then this is, you can see this lens is flatter. This is a 72 degree. So no fisheye, no wide angle. It's like a what you would normally consider like a one-to-one -one camera. And this one also has autofocus. because you can see the metal case. And then this one is the chonkiest. It's the 160 degree, super ultra wide angle, very distorted, but great for like if you're making a security camera or a wildlife camera and you want to get you know, a whole bit, almost 180 degree um, camera view, even if you don't care that it's not like perfect for like photography. That's cool. That's one-to-one. -one. So I thought I would show yeah. on the overhead. I have, um, so let's, okay, so. Do it. So this, okay, hold on. Let me, um, let me unplug this. I'm going to plug in the, the least distorted and then move my right, way up. I'm going to... No, no, wait. What while you're doing that, I'm going to yeah, show these good. wonderful photos. They're wonderful photos. Okay. So I'm going to plug in the first one. So bear with me because this is, I only... I have one board to demo with and so I have to swap them out, but I can't hot swap them. Okay. So let's see. Okay. So this is... Um, okay. So this is the one... Uh, sorry, the 72 degree... So like, you know, my face is not distorted. I can like zoom in. My face is not distorted and you see it's like a very narrow um, band of what you can see. It's just like what's around my head. So this is 72 degrees and I'm upside down because the camera's just flipped. Okay, so then I will do the 120 degree somewhat low distortion. Hold on one second. Sorry, just taping this down and then getting. Okay. This one is, uh, okay. So this is 120 low distortion. So you can see now 
you see way more than just my head. You can actually see Mr. Lady Ada. You can also see a little bit of the camera. Um, and, you know, the center is not too distorted. Like, you know, you'll see compared, it is somewhat distorted, but it's not as much as, um, I'll show maybe in a bit the 120 that's more fisheye. Okay, so next up, I'm going to remove this one. And then I'm going to plug in. So this is, gosh, they look very similar. This is, I think, the 120 fish eye. Um, so this is, okay, get the center. Okay, this is the 120 um, fisheye lens. So it's got like a more flat look. It doesn't have like a hallway look. Um, but as you get to the edges, like things start to like get, you know, like, like they get bigger, especially like if you look at faces and then I'm going to do the 160 and you're going to see it's like significantly different. So the 160 is this one, last camera to go. Nothing harder than inserting the last camera of the batch. Impressive. Okay. So this is the 160, and this one is like very distorted. So you can see now, you can definitely see Mr. Lady's head. You can see the closet. You can see the ceiling. Yeah. Um, so this is, you know, you get almost like 180 degrees, but obviously if you're taking photos of people, you're like, your head is so tiny and your, your hand is so big. Um, but that's the trade-offs with the, the lenses. So mm -hmm. we, you know, they're all the same breakout, the same, uh, breakout board. Um, let's see this one, uh, they're all the same breakout board. Um, this one I've soldered the headers onto, um, we've got code for the ESP32 S3 and the RP2040 to use these cameras. You do need to have a microcontroller that can handle, um, the 8-bit interface. So not every microcontroller can do it. It's, it's a standardized interface. But we really only recommend using the RP2040 or the ESP32 S3. Um, and on the back, if you're using autofocus mode, uh, just short the VM jumper, and that will um, let you load the firmware that makes the autofocus work. So you'll just notice the autofocus ones have the metal body outside, and then the non-autofocus have the lens. Note that the, the lens does screw in if you really wanted to change the focus, but the default is infinite focus, and it's good for like 99%. Okay, and with that is new products of the week. Yay! Do, 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 do.